What's going on, smart people? Bringing you another episode of Drinking and Deriving, YouTube's favorite kid show. Just kidding. But I really like doing these episodes because I don't like to take this stuff too seriously. Sometimes it's nice to just crack open a cold one with the smart people and derive something for the hell of it. Today, we're going to be deriving Maxwell's wave equations for electric and magnetic fields. And we're going to do it using nothing but this identity here, this curl double product. Uh, it's a really simple derivation. I don't know how far I'll get into this beer, it's pretty fast, but we'll see how everything goes, but let's get into it. Now, like I said, this is a really simple derivation. All we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking curls of Maxwell's equations that already have curl in it, applying this identity here. Now, I'm not proving this identity in this video. It's really simple also to get through. Uh, all you have to do, or a simple way to do it, is to maybe do something like define some vector f equal to one of these curls, say curl of v and then break it into components. Fi is equal to epsilon ij k of del j vk, and then do the same thing for the curl of this. So if you break it into the levi civita symbol and those kinds of relationships, this identity is, is it's trivial to find. But uh, let's go ahead and take the curl of the electric field. Now we're not going to make any assumptions about the charge density or the current density at this time, but we'll see how the wave equations simplify once we do. So let's go ahead and do this. So the curl of the curl of, that's a weird x, of the electric field by this identity means that this is just equal to the gradient of the divergence of the electric field minus its Laplacian. Okay, now that's for the left hand side, but we also have to do this for the right hand side. So this is equal to minus the curl of the partial derivative of the magnetic field with respect to time. Now if you're doing this, this is inherently in a Euclidean space, if you will, which means we're assuming that it doesn't matter which order you take partial derivatives. Partial derivatives will commute. So if we take one where it's a spatial derivative or a time derivative, we can take one before the other and it's not going to change anything. Meaning that this whole thing can be written as the gradient of the divergence of the electric field minus the Laplacian is equal to minus the partial derivative with respect to time of the curl of the magnetic field. So you can do this, assuming that you're working in flat space-time. Okay, but we also know what the curl of the magnetic field is. That's just, that's just the Ampere-Maxwell equation. So let's substitute that in. So we have the gradient of the divergence minus the Laplacian is equal to minus the time derivative of this bad boy right now. It's kind of crazy how easy this derivation is, but how crazy it looks. This just looks like hieroglyphics. Uh, cool. Now let's distribute everything out and let's also substitute in Gauss's law right now. So we have the gradient, one over epsilon naught, the gradient of the charge density minus the Laplacian is equal to minus the, uh, let's say mu naught, ddt of j, which is the current density, minus 1 over c squared, d squared e, dt, or basically there. Uh, let's go ahead and gather this term and this term on one side, and then the spatial second order derivatives and the time second order derivatives on the same side. So we will have del squared e minus 1 over c squared d squared e dt squared forgot my little squared right now um, that is equal to let's see here so that's going to stay on that's coming over so that's 1 over epsilon naught the gradient of rho um, plus mu naught d dt of j we can create an operator out of this, if you're familiar with the D'Alembert operator, we can define some operator box squared equal to del squared minus 1 over c squared uh, d squared dt squared. So when we operate on e, we just get this left hand side. So that gives us 
uh, box squared E is equal to 1 over epsilon naught, the gradient of rho, plus mu naught ddt of the current density. Now, for all intents and purposes, we're done here. But if we make some simplifying assumptions, like we just have an electric wave propagating in free space where there's nothing for it to interact with, meaning there's no charges to interact with, well then the charge density and the current density will go to zero, in which case we get box squared E is equal to zero. So we have the wave equation for the electric field, the vacuum wave equation, where there are no charged particles for the electric field to interact with. Cool. Magnetism. Let's do it for magnetism now. Now, this here was really easy to come up with. Magnetism case is even easier because as you can see right now, we have to take the curl, all right, you're done here, we have to take the divergence of the electric field, but when we're going to have to do that for the magnetic field, we already know it's zero. So this is going to be this is going to be super easy. But let's go ahead and do it anyways for the children. Okay. Hardest part of this is erasing the board. Am I right? <laughs> Oh god. All right. Let's just write down uh the wave equation for the first one. So wave e q n apostrophe s there might not need to be an apostrophe. So one. We got this one. box squared e equals 0. Let's just assume that there's no charges to interact with because then I'd have to write the right hand side. But let's go ahead and take the curl of the magnetic field now. Curl of the curl of the magnetic field is just equal to, let's say it together, the gradient of the divergence of the magnetic field minus the Laplacian of the magnetic field is equal to, okay, uh, the gradient or the curl of this whole thing. So that's going to be the curl, so mu naught, the curl of J plus. 1 over c squared, the curl, almost wrote the Laplacian, <laughs> silly me, uh, the curl of the partial derivative of the electric field with respect to time. We already know that we can swap which order we take the partial derivatives, which is noise. We also know that this right now is zero. We get that minus the Laplacian of the magnetic field is equal to mu naught del cross j. Uh, let's go ahead and swap that order plus 1 over c squared ddt of del cross e. But we know what del cross e is, that's just Faraday's law. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that stuff in. You not del cross j. C squared, ddt, well, Faraday's law is just minus ddt of b, so this is just going to be a minus 1 over c squared, d squared, b, d, t squared. And then we'll do the exact same thing. We'll collect this on this side, we'll put that over meow, and we get that del squared b minus 1 over c squared d squared b dt squared is equal to, no, it's equal to mu naught easy peasy. We also know that we can just define this whole thing as the, as the D'Alembert operator acting on b, and we get to the second wave equations, 2 box squared. Let's also b. Let's also just say that it's not interacting with anything. There's no charges moving around, so let's make this go to zero. And we get that box squared b is equal to zero. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have Maxwell's wave equations in terms of the D'Alembert operator where there are no charges moving around and stuff. All right, see you tomorrow.